so welcome guys with another reaction with a toxic couple um we're gonna do this <laughs> we're gonna do the second part guys uh, of andrew tate grills myron live full interview full debate there is a lot of important points i spoke about there is a lot of funny jokes uh, sarcastic things don't take anything personal learn to not take anything personal and learn to not to control your emotion don't let your emotion get involved with this kind of thing what they are saying because it's just for fun it's a, it's like for for boys locker room you can speak about everything they just did it online you know what i mean so make sure to check the store guys if you want to uh, support us for making more reaction more videos and more better quality make sure to purchase something from the store i have cool design there i just designed three t-shirts today you can may you can check them right now i'm gonna drop them in the video so So let's dig into the second part and see what's going on. And asked her to make you a sandwich and she said no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like the way Andrew said that sandwich thing. And you had the boss go, oh, I need you to make me a sandwich. Like Andrew said, no. And then your dumb ass still sitting there watching this show trying to get some fucking motivation. Motherfucker, you need to be able to tell women no. Also, they're they're broke. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Myron, I've seen you. Tell girls no. You've seen me tell girls yeah. no. Yeah, yes. You know, I've seen you tell girls get the fuck out. That's right. <laughs> I always say it. I always yeah. say it. I'll confess to my sins. I confess to my crimes. I have forced women, I have, to do one thing in this house. The only thing I've ever forced a woman to do in this house is to leave. There you and go. I've done that. <laughs> and it's fucking hard. Contrary to what you yeah. motherfuckers think on the here. The opposite that. of human trafficking. <laughs> Please leave. Here's taxi money. Get out. I'll see you tomorrow and I'll take you shopping. Can you please go home? <laughs> and they still try to say no. Jesus. But to answer your point, uh, Tristan, a high value guy. Human, human, human taxiking is what it is. The guy that has the human hump. fucking yeah. taxiking. Because I've been the one. What? Look, man. Yeah, you, you have yo, been. You have been. Well, I've been the one. About, let's talk about the past. No, this no. isn't me anymore. Because this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there with the girl. Fucking cry. I don't want to leave. You got to leave. It, it, Tristan gave you the fucking money. You got to leave. I don't want to leave. Look, I'm the one to score them outside. Human taxiking yeah, is what the fuck it is, man. Taxi. Human taxiking. She don't want to leave. Look, man, he'll see you tomorrow. Ah, you got to leave. Ah. It's true. Yeah. We're going to say, well, we're going to say. But it asked to the point that you have options as that guy because, again, if you're the guy making 50K a year, you're trying to make a final girlfriend, that's great. But that's your only option for the most part if you do find one. But as a result, you cater to her, you bend, you bend to, her, to her will, you become her slave, basically. But if you have options as a, as a guy, you can start tell her, no, we're doing this. And if she leaves, cool, goodbye. Well, well, well Trump's, Trump's book, uh, The Art of the deal. deal, and he nails it in The Art of the Deal. He said, if you're not prepared to walk away, you can't negotiate. Yep. That's the bottom line. If you're not going to walk away, no matter what happens, then how would you have a negotiating position? And you're not going to be able to walk away if you don't have options. Mm -hmm. So you need to understand that's the way, that's human nature. It's not even just about girls and relationships it's about business it's about friendships it's about absolutely everything else you have to be able to sit and say the 48 you don't meet my no standard, human I nature i can do better i like that book or too. at least equal without the disrespect goodbye yeah and that's going to be easy if you get your own life in order and, and this one is also, for i don't want to sound too airy fairy and mystical but it's kind of there's so many things about the world the universe that no one understands i don't understand that people don't understand and when you're truly trying your best People often ask me, they say, well, if women love money, why are they with these guys or these broke guys or why are they with this guy who's trying to come up? I think if you're actually really trying your best in your life and you're doing your very best to build a life, even if you don't have it yet, I think people can smell it. Not yeah. just women, men. Ambition. People can smell the ambition. They can see their life's in order. They're good. They're, something's right. It's a, You can call it magic. You can call Potential it energy. Loud. You can call it something. Potential is very loud. And it's it's kind of amazing that guys will sit and go, oh, what do I do about this girl? How do I get this girl? And they'll send super chats. How do I get this girl? How do I get that girl? If you actually just do the things you know you're supposed to be doing. Uh, I will speak about something. I have it in mind for so long. Uh, you know, we... We re, uh, like he said, we are in a competition way. Even if we don't want it, we are in competition way. And that's true. That's, that's, that's the truth. Because I say to my wife, 
it's just this is how many things uh, we are competing against each other for example I have a friend he was passing a driver lessons and he got his uh, uh, theory like uh, the, the code of the road he got it before me I was pissed like why why he get it before me we I, I subscribe in school before him why he get it before me you know and then I get mine he get with he get it with three mistake I get it zero mistake so I told him like I right, bro I take it with zero mistake it's just you see it's like competition brain like you work in a competition there is no competition in this kind of things but it's anyway it's competition in the mind I don't know how it works but we all think the same thing we all think that we are competing about with everybody that's how we are we think that we are competing with everybody so I told him like and then I told him like I'm start. I'm gonna. I start driving because I know how to drive. He doesn't. So I told him, bro, I'm gonna have it on before you, bro. And he get pissed off, like, and he, you know, it's this compete. It's healthy. I'm not saying it's work because I wish him the best. But it's healthy competition. He went and he's practicing more, and I am practicing more. Even though I know how to drive, I'm still practicing. Uh, this uh, the, the bottom from this conversation. What I'm saying is that we are in a world with, where we are, we are, where we compete against each other. Even we don't feel that we are competing we are competing without knowing it we are in competition world especially between the men we are competing against each other some of some of them are healthy and some of them are worse but uh, i recommend you to be in the healthy competition that's what you're going to be pushed to your limits and get your life in order you'd be amazed how quickly it all falls together it's like everything else in chess good moves come from good positions Boxing, you don't, you land the good punch because you're standing in the right place at the right time. You do the right things. The rest of it's actually pretty easy. And as bad as this world is and as difficult as women are and feminism and all these things, I promise you, if you're acting the way a man should act with honor, integrity, you're hardworking, you're perspicacious and you have perseverance and you do all the things you're supposed to do, you're going to find a loyal woman who adores you. You're going to find it. You can be in the war. You can be in it's Miami, rare. Ratchet City, but you'll find a girl who's obsessed with you if you're doing all the things you're supposed to do, even if you're not a millionaire yet, but if you're doing the things you're supposed to do. It's kind of beautiful how God will give that to you if you finally get your act together. Because it's so rare. Like, you guys, it, it, it's never, the bar has never been, like, there's so many fucking losers out there that don't have their shit together, that are fat that are strange, that are weird, they smell, their hygiene is fucked up, they don't dress well, they don't go to the gym. Like, you can literally take over, like, if you got you get your shit together. And if you can get your money, guys, I'm not telling you how to become multi, multi fucking millionaires or billionaires, but yo, work to make six, 100K per year, man. All of you guys can fucking do that. I'm telling you guys, there's fucking kids in the real world right now making 20K per month, man. There's fucking kids in the real world right now yeah. with, with their program. Like, making that kind of money. In high school, he's fucking studying for SATs. <laughs> Yeah, I'm fucking making more money than you. Absolute fact. And you're going to have a different level of respect for yourself. And that's going to be something that people sense. And maybe, maybe, probably, I think that the universe or God or whoever you want to call it, I think they know what they're doing. You're going to get exactly what you deserve in this life. And if you don't have the things you want, quite often you don't actually deserve them. And if you start acting in a way where you do deserve them, you'll be surprised how quickly and easily they appear. You'll, you'll see. And a lot of you are sloppy and lazy and you don't care to look back and realize where you've been sloppy or lazy or realize where you've made mistakes. And then you're under, uh, not understanding why your life is constant blunders and bluffs. Well, that's because you keep making mistakes. You're kerfuffling. Mm. That's a nice word. So, Andrew, let me ask you this. There's probably a bunch of guys right now that are watching this. Don't have a Valentine, right? Or maybe got over a hard breakup and, you know, whatever. Their fucking girls out being a whore right now at the club because a lot of girls. This is actually one of the best times to go to the club because all the girls are whores on Valentine's. What would you tell them? Walt what should they do? Right? Yeah. Walt, well, yeah. He's, he's there every Valentine's. Thanks, Walt. Um, Sorry to keep you he Actually, matter of fact, we're keeping him from the club right now. He Sorry. wanted to go. Sorry. Um, you too. Me? Yeah, you want to go too. You got proof? Okay. I'm going to continue. So, no, so yeah, continue, yeah. Continue. nobody here believes you, man. Uh, so, Andrew Tristan, what would you suggest to that guy that's watching this right now that's probably down in the dumps, doesn't have a Valentine, or maybe his girl left him to go to the club and be a whore tonight? I think all the bad things that happen to you in your life are extremely important. I think pain is one of the most important elements of the alchemy that's required. Basically, he's going to say the same speech that he already said. Because these kind of things, we heard them before he's saying them. He's preaching them again and again. And what, why he keep preaching them again? Because nothing changed with the word. And as much as he can preaching them means that these things are still the same. Nothing changed. So that's why he's still preaching them. 
happened to you in your life are extremely important. I think pain is one of the most important elements of the alchemy that's required to become the most fantastic version of yourself. If you look at any superhero movie, the the superhero had pain. Batman's Batman because they killed his parents. If they didn't kill his parents, he simply wouldn't be Batman. And I think a lot of men, when bad things happen to them, a heartbreak, etc., they don't understand that all that pain that's been given to you in that scenario is extremely important and valuable. Probably the worst experience as a man is to go through life and everything go right all of the time. Actually, imagine that. You're born, you're, you wake up, everything's fine. No one's trying to kill you. No one's trying to put you in jail. Your girl ain't going to leave, and you don't have to go gym, and no one's going to try and fight you, and your bills are always paid. That sounds, almost, that sounds depressing to me. Mm. Uh, genuinely. All these bad things are supposed to happen to you so you can level up. You're supposed to go through the pain so you can get better. That's, it's, this, it's a universal law. of It's a constant of the universe. Even if you want to build bigger muscles, you have to destroy the old ones. That's how they grow bigger, right? You want to be more resilient. You want to be more observant. You want to be more capable of dealing with negative scenarios or heartbreak or bad things happening to you. Well, then you better get used to pain. Pain is the flavor of life. And the people who try and change the flavor are never going to be as competitive as the people who eat it up and go, okay, that's what it tastes like. Fine by me. Give me some more. And those are the ones who get very good at it. So if you're sitting here at home and you're sad, fantastic. I'm a little bit jealous. I'm, I'm genuinely a little bit jealous. Bad things are supposed to happen to you, but you have to use them as fuel. You can't sit there and let the bad things happen to you and feel sorry for yourself because nobody gives a shit. I don't yeah. give a shit. Your friends barely give a shit. The girl doesn't give a shit anymore. you got to take all that pain and turn it into something good. That's your responsibility as an adult because that's the only thing that allows you to have absolute sovereignty and control of the situation. I want to say this too real quick. Reddit, sorry, Reddit doesn't Go give ahead. a shit. Your blogs don't give a shit. Uh, my answer to that, to that would be something like, uh, imagine you're on a sailing boat. There's 10 of you. 10 of you are on a sailing boat miles and miles from yes, any land from the shore and the boat springs a leak a leak the boat starts to sink it does sink and there's 10 of you in the water right mm -hmm. you swim and you swim and you swim every single one of you thinks fuck this boat sank fuck this sucks fuck this is shit i do anything i do anything for that boat to be back for that boat not to have sank and you and maybe one other dude out of the 10 reaches reach the shore you get onto that sand you lay your back on that beach, you look up at the sky, and you think, fuck, thank, fuck, I'm saved. After just a day, or a week, or two weeks, when you're finally back at civilization, you will be so happy that boat sank, because that will be a defining moment of your life. Now, the sinking ship can be an analogy to, I think, everything that every man has been through. You ever had your heart broken when yeah. you were younger? You? Of course. You? No. Shut the fuck up, Marcel. Well, well you're, an, you're an ice cold player. Yeah. But thanks. let me tell you something. Thank you, bro. I, Thank you, bro. Tristan Tate, who was once known as an ice cold player, you know, I, was once, I was once a 21, 19, 22 year old kid who had his heart broken. Am I not? But when I say focusing on the event, paddling in that water in the ocean, no matter how long you stay there, dreaming that the boat comes back is always the wrong way to live. It is the wrong way to live. When you've been through the hardship, you have to persevere through it and get through the other end. And that's what separates the wheat from the chaff. That's what separates the milk from the cream. So you can, like my brother was said, go through hardship, let it break you, let it destroy you, let yourself fall in some mediocre life that you don't like and you don't love and you lose your, lose your passion and you lose your fire. And that's fine because that's what's going to happen to most people who go through hard experiences. But... You don't want to be that person. You want to be the small percentage. Because not everyone listening is going to go through hard shit and make it through. Yeah. You want to be that small percentage that does make it through. That goes through the But guys, you have also to think like you don't need someone like Andrew Tate to, to explain to you this kind of things. It's already said by your father how he raised you from beginning. He raised you the same as they are saying. You know what I mean? So... You, this kind of thing resonate with you, sp resonate with a lot of men going through and follow them a lot because they was raised like that but from their father and in the time they start changing because with society and then when he hear it again it's just, it's like your brain is memory, it's, it's like a memory working again like say oh you already know how your father raised you like this, you know so that's why I'm saying.
like my father tell me like all the time you need struggle in your life you cannot all the time like everybody everybody i believe that when your father tell you a story he tell you a story how he struggle so you understand what i'm saying where i came from what i'm saying like this so yeah and as i'm saying like my father all the time like you need struggle you cannot be someone if you don't struggle you cannot do something if you don't struggle you need to fail to succeed the hardship and laughs about it smiles about it you asked me about jail about 10 times today every single time i think i burst into laughter at least once did i not yeah and that's the way yeah. it is you have to be the guy who could go through the hardship so many people now watching this the thirty thousand watching live and the millions who will watch this i'm sure in the coming days and weeks and months will be like oh no but with me well right now i'm going through this good there's tens of thousands of you who will hear this message and maybe three four hundred are going to make it to the point where they're like ha 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 that was so good that was so hilarious i'm now killing it you know um i'm going to quote the great m bison from street fighter oh because shit m bison is not just a mighty warrior with the powers of electric shock but he's also a philosopher mm. and he was speaking to chun li once you whore this is the yeah, this is the, <laughs> chun li you whore yeah so no <laughs> but this is history because because street fighter really happened yes so uh, as a historical person who, who knows historical knowledge chun li once says to bison and this is a defining moment of my life hearing bison say this because this is very much how i feel chun li says you burned my village you killed my parents you murdered my family. You blah, 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 blah. And he was like, what, I did? And she was like, what, you don't remember? And his exact line was, the day that bison graced your village is the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. <laughs> and the way that I have lived Damn. through all of my heartbreaks, through all of my setbacks, through all of my losses, to everyone listening who I've ever lost, I always say, Everyone I've ever lost is worse off without me. Mm. They now are 35 to 40 year old men and women, women and men. And the most interesting fact about them, the first thing they bring up within 10 minutes of conversation with anyone they meet is, yeah, I used to date Tristan Tate. Yeah, I used to be friends with Tristan Tate. And I don't even remember who the fuck they are. Mm. So that's what persevering gets you. Bit long winded, but no, absolutely. that's I well said, awesome. bro. Yo, Don Marco. Well said, Don Yo, Marco. Become the become the fucking bison, you faggots. Become the bison. Destroy villages and don't even let niggas. They remember you, but you don't fucking remember them. Let's fucking go. Chun Li's a slut. But I do want to say this real quick. I do want to say this because you guys talk about this all the time, and I really want to fucking drive this home. You guys are my are my age range. Remember when you used to go to school and everyone was like, "What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an astronaut." I want to be a fucking scientist. Yes. I want to be a fucking doctor. I want to be a lawyer, etc. Yes. You know what happens now when we ask guys, kids, what do you want to be? I want to be an influencer. And this is for all the younger guys here watching this, right? You got time change. Guys here at the time table change. I'm going to tell you how the fucking world works. I get it. A lot of you guys watch these young streamers that are fucking doing crazy shit on the internet to Clowns. get views. Maybe they're Just big say. on TikTok. Maybe they're big on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Kick, whatever the fuck, right? Yeah. But I want you guys to understand that that's not real life. Real life for most of you is working a minimum wage job. Real life for most of you is figuring out the value of a dollar. Real life for most of you is grinding and figuring out how life really fucking works. The worst thing you can be is rich while you're young. I, I genuinely think the worst thing for a man is become wealthy young, bro. It's the fucking worst because you don't learn the characteristics that people that are wealthy have to develop to earn the money that earn them respect in society. Yeah. Think about this. All these crypto millionaires, they're at a fucking club with a bunch of chicks, right? Uh, there's a bunch of clubs in Miami, these crypto millionaires. Well, all these girls, they come on our fucking show, the bitches. Oh, yeah, this crypto millionaire paid me all this money, blah, 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 to just hang out with him, whatever. Because he didn't learn the skill set and get the money out the mud, right? And understand how to read people, how to read situations, how to read body language. Because they, they haven't done real business deals. They haven't worked in the real world. They haven't had a boss before. They don't understand uh, fucking tempers. They don't understand the chain of command, etc. Guys, there's nothing wrong with fucking suffering and getting out there and figuring out how the world really fucking works. Like, you're not gonna sit out here. Most of y'all are not gonna be fucking influencers. Sorry, a lot of you aren't gonna be TikTok stars. Sorry, a lot of you are gonna get a fucking kick deal, a rumble deal, a YouTube uh, situation. It's not gonna happen for most of y'all. And That's there's true. nothing wrong with that. We need productive members of society that can do different things. But understand, 
that most of you guys are going to have to suffer to get to that point to become productive as a man. You must become a tool. A tool is only uh, you, as useful as it be, can, can be useful to other people. So you have to learn a skill set, man. A lot of you guys are not going to fucking sit here and become a multimillionaire at fucking 17, 18. It's not going to happen. You see these fucking YouTubers, these Twitch streamers, whatever, and you see, damn, I want to be like that. Well, you want to be a fucking moron on the internet for views? It's not worth it, bro. <laughs> and a lot of you guys are not going to reach it anyway. The reason... Oh, completely, bro. The reason all of us here have something to say is because we've had hard lives. Mm -hmm. That's it. If our lives were easy, we wouldn't have anything to teach you. And then we'd have to try and get views by self-depreciating ourselves and acting like clowns. You need to have all the difficult things in your life is, is what makes you who you are as a man. And e women intrinsically understand this. I'll give you a, the simplest example. Why do women like scars? Hmm. Something happened to him. Experience. But he's still here. Yeah. He's experienced. They tried to kill him, but he's alive. They like that. You ever, you, ever, you ever read the book Silence of the Lambs? Never read the book. Anyway, well, I, I, it might be the book. Oh, I'm lonely this winter. I'm fulfilling the wish of the loving being. I don't know that would hold for me to be alone. I'm lonely this winter. Movie, but anyway, Hannibal Lecter one says, Scars hold the power to remind us that the past was real. One of my cool mm. It's a very cool quote. Yeah, you're on fire with the quotes, man. But yeah. For real. But yeah, you're saying, yeah, what, what? Why do women love scars? Yeah, you're right. I'm covered in them. Because you have to go through some things. So to answer the question we asked earlier, if you're at home and it's Valentine's Day and you're sad, etc., good. Good. You're lucky and you're blessed and you need that mental reframe. And it's amazing how powerful a mental reframe can be. I think a lot of people even underestimate that, that the exact same scenario with a complete different reframe of it can change the outcome and all the lessons you learn from it. When bad things happen to me, my first answer is good. I've trained myself. This has happened. Good. Good. It's supposed to happen. Good. And that's the ultimate reframe. Because if you're going to sit there and go, oh, why me? I... I don't, I don't know, Marcel, you can tell me. Has anyone actually ever truly given a fuck enough to fix your life besides yourself? No, never. They're not going to, bro. They're not going to. you got to do it yourself. You need all these bad things to happen to you, and you have to use them as fuel. And if you get your life in order, you'd be amazed how easy life can be. And I actually think, especially in the world we live in now, maybe we talk about generations, and I don't want to sound like one of them crazy old grandpas. You are. I am. <laughs> maybe. But like in our, in our day, there was the hot girl in school you wanted. Or maybe the hot girl at work you wanted. That's it. But it must be strange now to be 17, 18, have no money, no value, no life experience. And you're seeing all these baddies on Insta. And you want a piece of all of them. And you can't get any of them, no matter what you say and or do. some of do. them are your fucking age, too. Yeah, well, they're your yeah. age. Yeah. Living a crazier life than And they're you. with a 40-year-old millionaire on a boat. And, and you're working in Starbucks. It must be a, a mind fuck. Yeah. Well, that's, it, that's true. So you have to, so what do you do in that position? Well, you have to understand, okay, I got to go out there and become a man of value and value only going to come through suffering. It's not going to come any other way. So let's extrapolate the argument. This is a very interesting point that I think we made a, a couple times. Back in the day, it wasn't just that men were more isolated. I only see the hot girl at my school. I only see the hot girl at my office. Women were much more isolated too. Let's, yes. live, you, say, let's say you live in a village in Slovenia filled with coal miners, okay? Mm. In the 1960s, the 1970s, and the 1980s, the hottest girl is going to end up with the baddest coal miner, the coal miner's boss, the overseer of the coal mine. Yeah. Because that's the localized situation of the sexual marketplace. When we preach masculine excellence and being the best version of yourself and going out there to be a top-tier male, and Myron makes his very valid points about feminism kind of and, and get, being a massive advantage to the top-tier males, let me tell you something. There can be a coal mining town in Slovenia right now. And you could be the baddest coal miner that there is right now. You could be the boss of the fucking mine. And the 19-year-old, 10 out of 10, virgin Slovenian girl in the coal mining town is going to accept an invitation to New York City or Dubai from some guy who's worth $100 million that the coal miners are not going to be able to compete with. And coal miners are fucking important people. So are farmers, so is everyone else. But you need to be exceptional and you need to be the best in the best. You know, actually, I'm going to read out, this isn't even a super chat. Do you remember that time that that, that Marine that with the mental health problems went viral? He was crying, 
He had a beard. He was in his car. He wasn't getting the mental health care he, he wanted. Anyway, maybe you know that moment. Yes, maybe yes, you know. yes, yes. Anyway, I'm familiar with he it. He is now, but I reached out to him after that happened. I've been a very good friend of his for about a year and a half. I speak to him almost daily. On Instagram, he made a, he made, he said something. He goes, well, Myron is wrong. You could be average, but as long as your work ethic isn't, then um, then then you're good. And uh, in fact, he said this about 20 minutes ago, but that sums up everything that we were saying. Joe, shout out to Jojo. He's an awesome dude. He's completely right. Andrew said it. You, you know, what did you say? Potential. You could smell potential. Oh, yeah, Ambition. potential is loud. Yeah, yeah, potential is loud is what you said. Yeah. Yeah, people know if you're a high value dude, if you're a trying your best dude, if you're a top tier dude, it doesn't necessarily mean the 50k a year, but people can smell it on you if you're going to be able to go the extra mile to provide them with a good life. Go the extra mile to back them up. Be, go the extra mile to be their friend. Go the extra mile to be that good husband. Go the extra mile to be the good father. People can tell these things on you. So Jojo's actually right. He was dismissing a point that you had made earlier. But, um... Yeah. Uh, is that my point? Yeah. No, the point is... Yeah, so guys, that was... Uh, I think I'm gonna stop right, right here. I'm not gonna do it fully. I'm gonna drop this one as a second part. Maybe later on I'm gonna do... Sorry. Maybe later on I'm gonna do third part. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna ju drop just two parts. And if you ask for third part, I'm gonna drop it. I don't know if the uh, YouTube gonna accept it. I don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna drop it and see what's going on. And... Uh, yeah, the, so they spoke about different points, like usual, they have really good points and and most of them are funny things, like we say, boys between boys, funny jokes, uh, sarcastic things, so do not take anything personal, don't be an emotion, emotional, and just uh, try to make, try to take only fair points and really points that it resonate with you and with your morals, so if it doesn't resonate with you and with your morals, so it's not for you guys, so take only what you think that Oh, my mind is also thinking the same thing because all these kind of things we learn them from our father, family. So they not giving a new message, the same message. You know what I mean? Same message as you was raising up, uh, how your father raised you. So, so before we go, guys, uh, we, before we finish the reaction, make sure to subscribe, guys, and make sure to check the store. I just dropped three design right now. I just dropped them right now. I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna put the design that I dropped in the video and make sure to to purchase something from there yeah uh, i'm sure you're gonna like it anyway i'm sure you're gonna like it make sure to purchase something as a support for us also it's gonna be for support and in the same time uh, it's it's gonna be a nice t-shirt on you guys so see you for next reaction peace